Hello everybody and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about what lies beneath and that's with reference to cathedrals and basilicas and these religious structures and I actually sort of got there by studying these Roman styled baths that were in North America in the late 1800s. So I want to kind of walk through this and just there's pattern that I noticed by studying uh, by studying these structures actually and coming across the work of some other people as well so let's take a look at it um, this is a place called the Piedmont Baths and this was in Oakland California and uh, Oakland California apparently had a lot of interesting architecture that is no longer there just like a lot of other places and the reason why you know again we're studying we have to look at these structures over and over again because they keep trying to um, create false associations for us and give us false cover stories and this is just one of them with the church spires they'll tell us it's all symbolic and the finials on top are ornamental but it appears there's they were quite functional actually so we kind of have to go back and look at over all this stuff again so when I was looking into these Piedmont baths from apparently they say 1890 to 1939 uh, just I realized uh, that they were yeah they were fashioned after the classical Roman baths uh, or thermae as they're called and a lot of the original Roman baths, they say, were built around the first century, but they influenced the design of 19th century baths in the United States. That's kind of interesting. And uh, so I got the fl first floor plan from this Piedmont baths, and there was this one large tank, and I believe it was a saltwater tank. But there, there's this one um, room, I guess, called the Tepidarium. And when I was looking at the Tepidarium, it is uh, described as the warm bathroom of the Roman baths, heated by a hypocost or underfloor heating system. So I wanted to look into these underfloor heating systems a bit more and came across uh, somebody's work on the um, stolen history dot, I believe it's dot net now as opposed to .org, but I came across an article on it which I thought was really good by a contributor called Dreamtime and I'm gonna leave a link and I'm not gonna cover everything he talked about but I'm gonna hit on some points because this is gonna lead us into uh, there's an observation that something I noticed with regards to these cathedrals and basilicas and these uh, religious structures that uh, it's going to tie into this, I think, a little bit. So he was talking about how these Roman hypocausts are a myth. And when you start looking into these, um, he's just saying here he can't he can find a single image of a hypocaust stained and blackened with smoke. So these, hypo, these underfloor heating systems, there was an area where they say they're the fire would be uh, created and that fire the heat from that would feed the underground uh, system and and uh, but where the fire they say was you don't see any blackened stone and there were other heating systems at the time as well there's competing heating systems one of them's in Spain and I guess it's called the Gloria uh, it's similar in the fact that it's under floor heating designed differently but uh, you can see at the uh, area where the fire is generated you know you would get this blackened area so they don't find that with these hypocausts which is kind of interesting but it doesn't stop there uh, these hypocausts systems these underfloor heating systems in the walls there were these hollowed out sections and there were they had these uh, what are called tubuli and there's just these hollow bricks that are used to uh, to heat 
the bathhouse or even a Roman villa. So there were these hollow bricks and the heat would travel through there in theory and uh, heat the walls as well and, and there by the room. But uh, when they look at these, they don't find any, any buildup of soot that you would expect. Just like a, um, just like a chimney basically. Because if, if you don't clean these out, um, you know, you could get a fire, a chimney fire. So they don't find any evidence of uh, soot staining in these tubuli either. And there was, uh, there was this, um, what was it here? A research project uh, sponsored by the University of Innsbruck. And these people wanted to try and recreate a hypocaust in a Roman villa. And as soon as they fired it up, they got staining, which was visible on the outside of the of the uh, villa, and on the inside along the walls. So, and they had issues. Um, they had all kinds of issues with this project, and it was pretty much a big failure. And not only that, people they were speculating that it's a carbon monoxide risk. But yeah, the carbon monoxide gases could creep into these rooms. And so not only are they these, they're a risk, a uh, fire risk, but they're carbon monoxide risk. They're inefficient with the heating. It's not evenly uh, distributed. They cause staining. There's a lack of this uh, darkened stone and, and soot. There's no soot staining. So they don't appear to even ha have function, like the way they're telling us they functioned, a traditional wood burning, a heat source that doesn't appear to be the case and I find that really interesting because we're, we're rounding it back to the cathedrals now I think I mentioned this cathedral every single video Exeter Cathedral again uh, they were digging down and I forget I think it might have been a car park or something but 10 feet they came down and they hit one of these well, what's described to us as a Roman bass, and it had this hypo cost, this underfloor heating system. But again, it was in the same location. So I wanted to keep looking and just to see if there's a pattern. So I was looking at Notre Dame in Paris, and in the 1960s, during excavations for a car park, ancient Roman ruins were discovered. 80 meters underneath the site. So what is that? Uh, a little over 260 feet. And what else did they find? Uh, fourth century baths. And here's some of those. These are called pile. They were just stacked up uh, on top of each other. So I'm starting to see a pattern here. So the builders of this cathedral, this is buried 300 and 200, over 260 feet. So the builders of the cathedral might not have necessarily known this was here, but yet they built on the same spot. Interesting. And then again, another Roman bath, uh, this one in Bath, England, this was buried uh, in the, ex I think they were excavating it in the 1870s or thereabout, but it's got one of these Roman uh, this hypocaust heating underfloor heating system and there's a religious structure right next to it called Bath Abbey which you can see in the background interesting then I found another church called the Church of St. George in Sofia I believe that's Bulgaria built in the early fourth century as a Roman baths and it became a church and it's got this what they tell us is this underfloor heating system. But again, two different cultures, they're building in the same location. And going back to here, like I said, this was buried. Uh, so this Roman culture, they built here, this got buried, the evidence was, was, was hidden. And then this culture, who, who, whoever built these cathedrals, abbeys, whatever we call them, uh, they decided to build in the same spot. So then I found another one called the Basilica of St. Mary's 
of the angels and the martyrs and this is in Rome Italy and uh, it was built in the actual remains of a Roman baths called the baths of Dio Diocletian so you know what's going on here what is there's this uh, this pattern forming and you'll notice how uh, it looks like it's in a state of disrepair here so when you look at the history of this particular basilica uh, apparently Michelangelo designed this in the 1500s from ancient Roman baths and it just the backstory to this is uh, after the siege of Rome 537 the Goths cut the city's water supply and the bath they gradually fell into abandonment and dis disrepair and this is good the once opulent baths of Diocletian then came to be used as an unofficial quarry possibly for centuries so the reason why it looks like the way it does it, one of the reasons is because they were using it as an unofficial quarry um, let me I think I let me translate what what I think is really happening I just kind of lined up four of them here uh, these first three I think there was one event one destructive event that uh, took out what we refer to as the Roman Empire and that's why all these things are buried like uh, Notre Dame in Paris and Exeter Cathedral why this Roman baths was buried and uh, in this in Bath England uh, why this particular Roman bath was buried and it's not everything got buried some things just got destroyed and that's why this particular basilica is destroyed and not because it was an unofficial quarry but again that's my take but so there's this the the builders who are the, the cathedral builders and the Roman culture two different people entirely separated by a destructive event in my opinion but they're building on the same locations and sometimes in the same locations so these hypo costs and they don't that's why I find it interesting that they don't appear to function conventionally the way they're telling us so maybe there's something we're missing I think it might be related to steam power um, at this point I don't know what that is I'm still trying to figure it out but uh, yeah I just wanted to point out this pattern because uh, it seems to be pretty prevalent so now I want to talk about a video update okay today there's just going to be one video update and it's with regards to these fake dilapidated buildings they tell us uh, in the 1700s there was this architectural trend of building structures that were already basically destroyed <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, it was featured in this video called the fall of Rome and this is just one example it's called sham castle in Bath England and it's already in a state of disrepair but they say they built it like this but when I was looking at these structures you'll notice a lot of them are right next to golf courses and the speculation is that um, they're using golf courses as a means of covering evidence destroying evidence by putting golf courses there and you also in uh, North America in Newark Ohio there's this mound builders country club sitting right on top of a golf course I'm uh, sorry sitting right on top of these mounds there's this golf course it's just you know it's unbelievable so what I wanted to add is during the 1904 World's Fair uh, there's a park called Forest Park it was held at and today this park uh, it also I think there's one building left over from that that exposition but there's also a golf course here and a lot of times uh, I think they just hide things without telling us but every once in a while they'll just tell us they buried something uh, in the golf course and this is one of those times uh, I found an article professor hopes to unearth world's fair 
Ferris wheel from Forest Park. Uh, Louisiana Purchase Exposition, St. Louis, 1904. So this massive axle, which weighed almost 90,000 90, pounds, it was the largest single piece of Ford steel ever made in America. And it was so massive that the, their torches were useless in cutting it down to size. So they buried it. And uh, this gentleman here in 1943, I guess they were they were looking for it and they found they re recovered this four pound uh, nut from the wheel from the Ferris wheel but uh, this person's name is William Jones and apparently he worked for the wrecking company in 1906 that destroyed that fair all traces of it but they couldn't destroy this giant axle and he insisted that the axle was buried under the parks golf course and this is kind of where that giant ferris wheel was so they think the axle is somewhere by here but you can see the golf course in the background so yeah they just they're just uh they got all kinds of tricks but so this stuff they do bury things there and sometimes they tell us but sometimes they don't so i think that's all i have for you today i, I will be touching on stained glass Hopefully in my next video, I just wasn't quite prepared to speak on it yet, but um, So that's uh, that's all I have to say about that and uh, until next time take care. Bye